So oh, yeah, we she have would have bud and know, super knowledge of all it the it that. Maybe handle those questions a little bit better. Um, she'll also be able to. Office, we should probably talk about that. Then. Email communications she'll be able to come by that. if she needs to talk about Very good. The office way. So it'll just be a yep. little bit better. Um, just give it another as I was saying, uh, minute. It's faculty. She's going to fill in all the crevices that I yeah, you know, cool. don't have the We're going to switch the market over to the real It's cheaper. Oh. Yeah. So, it's easier to um, use. So I'm looking forward to it. And Debbie's cool. actually going to be helping with that. With the so I think, uh, put it on Facebook. Um, numbers or interview yes. uh, systems. Absolutely. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. So let's get rolling, you guys. It's, um, I don't know. Jenny <laughs> says, oh, Madison just said she's on her way. Eleven oh one, so we're like a minute late. It's still morning. So um, let me see what Madison just said. I know she's popping in too. How's everybody doing today? Great, good, good. really good. Good. What's good? Come some gratitude today. I need some gratitude today. Not me personally. I want to hear some gratitude. Yeah. Everybody, can you guys all hear? Everybody online? Thumbs up. You're behind me, so you got to speak up. Take yourself off mute. I don't care if your dogs are barking, your kids are screaming, That's whatever. True. You don't have your hair done, your makeup on. Scott, you forgot your Scott, eyeliner again. Scott, um, your, ma your hair is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> it's Debbie, all you good. Might wanna, Debbie, you might want to explain gratitude. You have some new people today. We do have gratitude. So, oh gosh, how do you explain gratitude? <laughs> right? Uh, someone or something that you are grateful for in the last few days, something that's happened in your life that you are grateful for, whether it's personal, whether it's business, somebody in the room, somebody not in the room. Who wants to go first? Kristen. Um, I would say Brooksy for doing that um, CMA little kind of class. She was sharing us what she had learned from some previous classes, and that was awesome to sit down and learn how she does the stuff from what she learned. It was an eye opener for sure. Good. Good. I mean, you can learn from everybody, right? And you hear, you see just a little bit different take, maybe looking at the same ball, but you see a little different take of it in somebody else's description and you get this aha. So cool. I love the way this office shares with each other as well. Who else? Okay. I've shared this before, but I'm just grateful to be a part of this market center and at KW because and it's truly, it's a great, it's a gratitude that I have daily because we have something here that other companies don't have. Yeah. And even other offices within Keller Williams don't have. Yep. And the culture here is amazing. It is amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Who else? I'm grateful Gina. I officially have my license. Yeah, introduce yeah. yourself. Because yeah. nobody but me knows you. That's about it, right? Gina Boone. Nice to see you. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Texas girl turned Colorado girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Well, Henry. I'm grateful because I, for the last couple of times that I've talked to all of you, have been pushing our short clothes and things that you can leverage to win contracts. And over the last couple of weeks, a lot of the agents that I'm working with have won contracts. And some of them have won them because of our short clothes. So uh, Marsha McCorkle, uh, she won a contract. We closed it in 15 days. And that was with a holiday in there. So uh, it was just, it's been really nice to see that when I do speak, you guys are listening. <laughs> and you're, you're taking the tools and the resources that we have and you're leveraging those tools uh, to win you more deals and to win your clients, obviously, the homes of their dreams. So I'm grateful that uh, I have a group that is utilizing uh, me as a resource. You got a lot of smart people around here. Yes. Absolutely. Right tool, right place, right? Right tool, right place. And knowing how to use it. You know, if you need a screwdriver and you take out a hammer, it doesn't work as well. Yeah, it doesn't work as well. Who else? Anybody online? Don't be quiet up there. I'll call on you. You know I will. <laughs> Bud. What you got for us today, buddy? Bud, buddy. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you know, I would say just 
you know, grateful for the ability to, um, to work in a business where truly kind of the, the sky's the limit, you know, obviously it's, it's tough sledding right now, but, um, you know, there's just, there's, a um, there's a lot of exciting things about working in this industry and, uh, um, and just the opportunity for, to kind of build your own brand within KW, which is, you know, obviously what KW is all about. And, um, so I'm just thankful for that opportunity, even in, you know, uh, tough times of, of, um, kind of battling for listings and, and buyers and things like that. Yeah, iron sharpens iron, right? It is really helps us hone our skills, doesn't it? Everybody mm -hmm. helping each other hone their skills. It, when it's easy, anybody can jump in and do it. It's mm -hmm. when our skills have to come into play that we really get to shine. Yeah, absolutely. 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 Anybody else? You little zoomies, you? All right, well, I have one more thing. I got an announcement for you. And it's mm, bittersweet at best. So Patrick, our team leader, has um, made a decision to start an expansion team here. And so he's got, he is stepping down as of today as team leader. And he will be working with Kristen Cole Network to build an expansion team here. And he sees y'all as production and kind of misses being in production and is um, jumping back into that. So um, not going very far. He's going to build it right here. So I, would you guys all do me a favor? We're in gratitude. If, if you've got his phone number in your phone, would you shoot him a quick text message of gratitude for everything he's done for you and for the Market Center? Four and a half years he's been with us as team leader. And um, so how cool that he's got this opportunity to go and build an expansion team. And Kristen Cole is actually who started expansion with Keller Williams. And uh, there's nobody better to build an expansion team with than the Kristen Cole Network. So, and what happens is she ends up coming in and visiting from time to time and sharing all of her expertise with you as does her husband, who's also a bowl coach, Denny Grings. And um, he comes in and pops in every once in a while. And we get visited from some of the best KW people I know. So shoot him a quick little text message. And um, he's going to be taking a few days off. It's spring break. And uh, so let uh, myself know, let Jake know if you guys have questions, if you need any help with anything. Um, that part does not change you know, that we step up and help you do anything and everything you need to do, as long as we don't end up in an orange jumpsuit. And if we do that, we'll just go together and slide in there, right? Good yeah. goal. Yeah. <laughs> so one more thing before I forget. So um, we didn't get a chance to put our vending machine in. It's like four to $7,000 for a vending machine. Just as we were getting ready to do that, this week happened last year, right? This was the last normal week last year, if you remember. So we put the kibosh on that. However, I, there's probably not a week that goes by that somebody isn't going, is there a vending machine somewhere in the building? I just need a coat. I just need Dr. Pepper. I need a bag of chips, Mr. Henry Russell. And so <laughs> I... You know, I thought, oh my gosh, we have this empty refrigerator sitting back here in the storeroom and some storage space. So it's all going to be, if it'll work right, that's my kind of plan. We'll put what's available. So I'll turn that, that glass wall right there when you pull up a switch actually becomes, you can see to it. So we'll put what's available and put prices there. And all the proceeds from that will go to our office, KW Cares. I mean, how fun is that? So you get to have way more calories than you ever needed. And um, and then also help out something really cool. Uh, so we do a lot of really fun things with our KW Cares Club. So ALC members are here today. That is the agent leadership council that Gary started, oh gosh, 30 some years ago. Um, when he had a brand new company 
And part of them left to go to this new company called Remax that landed in um, Austin, Texas. And so he gathered the people that were left and said, how do we build a company in an office that everybody wants to join and nobody wants to leave? And so they came in with their laundry list of things. And one of the very first things was, we want to say in how the company is run, not what kind of copy paper you put in and you know what type of coffee cups you have and all that type of thing. But we want to say in how the company is run. And so that's when the Agent Leadership Council was formed all those many years ago. So we have one on uh, an international basis as well that meets mm, two times a year, I believe. And um, so every single market center has an Agent Leadership Council and it's uh, made up of the top 20% of the office. So these are people that are serving. They're not making a doggone thing off of it. They're uh, their heart is all about the culture of this office, about giving back and serving. And so we've got a, a few of them up here. I'll start with who's behind me so I don't forget. Scott, wave, Scott. Scott, which, what are you cheering? So I am chairing the, what formerly known as Finance Committee. We have decided to rename it the Profit Committee. I love and that. The, uh, the, what we do is we um, folk, uh, uh, Shannon Duncan is, is the co-chair of that committee with me. I'm not sure if Shannon's on or in the office, yep, but uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I won't steal all his thunder, but uh, basically we're, uh, what we want to try to do is focus on, on profit for everybody, both in the sense of how to make our own businesses more profitable. And we wanna provide education for the office that um, helps, helps in that front. And also how to, how to help with the office, the market center in profitability, because that helps put, put more money in our, our pockets through profit share. So we'll be providing educational opportunities throughout the year in, in both of those regards. And would love to have anyone else who's passionate about that help help us out and, and join the committee. Absolutely. I love that you changed the name of that. Shannon, what do you want to add? This is Shannon Duncan. Yeah, we're just, uh, Scott and I talked the other day, uh, kind of looking at the profit from two, two points of view. One is the overall for the office, as, you, as Scott said, that helps with our profit share, but also just as it from an individual agency. So we're going to try to do some classes on you know, how you can save on your taxes. Uh, are you doing a profit and loss statement? Are you investing in rental properties? Because you know, as agents, we don't have a 401k. So we need to be doing something for our retirement. So we're going to kind of approach it from a couple of different points of view. I love that. Wealth building. Wealth building. Right? Wealth building. Yeah. It is wealth building. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, too, for sharing on that and for changing the name of that committee. That takes it to something positive. That just feels different. It feels good. That's how we talk about the answers. It's yeah, fine. I love it's that. Everybody to tell. <laughs> I love it. And then we've got uh, William Kretzer. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Are you still yeah. talking to me back there? I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> and so what are you doing? <laughs> so I am, I think this is my fourth year on ALC, Agent Leadership Committee. Um, I, I just enjoy it. And I think you guys that know me know that I enjoy different opportunities I can to, to give back. And being on the ALC is an opportunity for me to give back to our office. And I've chosen to be on the tech committee. Um, the tech committee, really what we are doing, and we could use some new people for this year, is we're trying to stay on top of what's going on with our with our command, the tech that the company has for us, you know, how to use it, um, where do we go for the best trainings, where do we go for new ideas, um, but not only the tech that Keller Williams has to offer, but what other tech is out there that we should be looking at or as agents we should be using. Um, there's tech that you can put on your phones that will help you record phone calls so you can have those conversations. Because um, you really need to document your conversations with your clients if it talks about and, and other agents when it comes to just negotiations and things like that. Because you don't want to get misquoted and said, well, you promised me this and this didn't happen. So 
again, just what other tech's out there that's good for us. So looking for a couple people to kind of help us run with that um, so we can set up kind of a, a monthly meeting and then be more focused on bringing a, a tech tip of the week to our Facebook page. So be looking for those. I've done some in the past, some tech tips of the week and video trainings that are helpful. You know, how do I get um, where someone can schedule an appointment with me on my KW website? That's a video I put up a few months ago, but things like that, that are helpful. Um, how can I take advantage of the new KW magazine for my buyers and sellers? Um, so that's something that we're starting to look into to get some tools out in front of you. So if you're interested in knowing more about our KW command, as well as working with me to find some other tech technology that we could all use and benefit from as agents, uh, let me know and let's get started together. Cool. Thanks, William. All right. Who else is up there? Madison, you're so tiny at the top. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I... I'm driving back because I had a closing this morning, so that is a, a good reason to miss team meeting today. But um, yes, I'm in charge of the culture committee, as many of you, many of y'all have seen my videos um, around the Facebook group. If you haven't checked them out, um, my job um, and the committee's job is to just like build KW culture around the office um, to just be there for our agents to create events at our office that um, are beneficial for all of our agents to participate in that is a zero cost to them, like our shredding event coming up. Um, and so it's just basically just building good culture. And that's, if anyone knows me, knows that that's what I love. So um, if y'all have any questions or if y'all would like to be on the culture committee, I would love to have you. I would love to have all the good ideas um, come our way. We are meeting the, the first and third Wednesday of every month at noon. Um, and yeah, come join us. Awesome. Thanks, Madison. Did we get everybody that's online? I think we did. Yeah. And... Erica. So I am the head of the uh, education committee. And from my understanding, there hasn't been an education committee in a couple of years. Is that correct? Yep. Um, so we need members. We need people. <laughs> I'm it right now. Um, my vision for the for the education committee is sort of to be the the point. We'll be working with the other committees because, as you've heard, they all have education within their communities so that we can be sort of the, the hub for bringing resources to the market center, to our agents, to be able to provide education, um, going out and talking to other agents, finding the holes where we may need more education, um, wants, maybe there's something that you want to learn about and we haven't offered that and maybe we can help you find that. So I would love to have other people come on board with me just to help me uh, pinpoint resources and figure out the needs for the um, market center. I don't know if you guys are aware, but we're kind of in a rapidly changing world right now. Do you, you haven't noticed? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and our industry is changing even faster. And if we're going to keep up with industry, we've got to have education. Absolutely. That's just, I mean, that is key. So that's my passion. Come join me. I'd love to have you. And let's make it fun. Let's make the education here. Okay. And roller coaster ride for us here across the Denver metro area. We're tracking a lot of snow um, moving in for the week. I'll show you that coming have, up. But... Um, Mary Hubner, is she up there yet? I don't see Mary. So Mary's the chair of the growth committee. And so we'll let her come up and, and chat when uh, I believe she left on vacation. So on spring break a couple of days earlier. Who am I missing? Debbie, her video is also posted on the Facebook group. So anyone that wants to hear about the growth committee, please go check out that video. It was posted yesterday. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. So you guys know all your communication from the office will not come from through the MCA email any longer. It will come through office at kwexecutives.com. So make sure that you put that in so it doesn't go to spam. 
whatever it is you want to call it, right? So that's where your communications from. Your office emails will come out primarily on Fridays, unless there's something that we need to get out to you immediately. So keep an eye out for that. And um, hopefully we'll get these Zoom link things figured out a little bit. Um, Jake's Steak is going to be Friday. Is it this Friday? That's right. So um, that will, if that's at 2 o'clock. And so you'll see an additional email go out. You can see, just put that out this morning. So um, we'll be putting that out as well. Another really cool, fun, exciting thing is we have another lender partner in the office. And I wanted to introduce Robin. And Robin, why don't you come up and tell us about your, about AFN and tell us what AFN stands for. Okay. Sounds good. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. Um, well, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Robin McGinnis, and I'm with AFN. We like to call it Team AFN. Um, American Financial Network is what it is. Not to be confused with American Financing, which I you know when I'm rattling it off real quick, they're like, oh, American Financing. No, not that. Um, it's new to, new to Colorado, um, but it has been around. 20 plus years, started by a father and son, um, primarily in California, my regional offices in um, New Jersey. So we kind of have the coast covered and everything, and then we're the first branch in Colorado to come here. Um, there's city bags on the tables, it's in there, some sheets, it kind of gives you some highlights of AFN, who we are, what we do. Um, you know, it's in the world of lending, there's a lot. That is similar, and then there's a lot that's unique too. We've got over a hundred different brokers that we can broker loans through. We can do lots of first mortgages. We can do all kinds of different variety of things in our portfolio. Um, communication is huge. Uh, we like to call it team AFN for a very good reason. It's family. We like to work together as a team. Team equals success. Um, I'm excited to bring you all into our team of success and partner with you and, and um, really make something happen. Um, me personally, I did write down some notes here. It just says, older, can put this quickly. Um, I am a mom of two. I've got a 10 year old and a 16 year old um, husband as well. And so life outside of here is really busy. My kids are active in sports and all kinds of fun things. And for all those guys out there, you know how that goes. This is my second career. My um, first career was as a flight attendant. So um and uh, flew for almost 20 years for frontier airlines loved it there just comes a time when you're like all right you know what time for something else and and moving on um i feel like all the experiences in that world though have really lent themselves to this communication being um top of my priorities even if there's nothing going on communication needs to be going on um to reach out and say hey i don't have any updates but i'm just checking to let you know um, it really, you know, it, it goes a long ways when people aren't going, where are we, what are we doing, what's going on? So that's a big piece of that. Um, the, other, the other part of it is just ingrained in that and ingrained in me is being able to respond in a critical situation in a calm and supportive manner. Um, you never know what's going to happen on an airplane on any given day and dealing with a broad variety of people it really, it's, it's crazy. And when I got into this, I was like, yeah, mortgages, it's just crunching numbers. And it's not, it's 100% about people. And being able to respond in those situations to different types of people, knowing how they're gonna click and respond and react and being able to be that person that says, okay, we're good, we got this. We'll get through this hurdle and, and all will be good. Um, the, let's see here, what else do I have? Um, you know, honestly, in that career, in this career, the biggest goal of mine is to just impact people in a positive way. Um, I know there's there's a lot at stake when somebody's buying a home. It's, it's a big deal. And us working together to create a great experience for them, 100% committed to focusing on follow through. And again, that commitment piece of it, it, it makes the experience one that's worth talking about later in a positive light. And that's my goal, to help people and to let them know that you know what it's it's it might be scary but it doesn't have to be and um us working together a party to get that get the through, get them through this process they're the experts they don't need to be so um excited for that excited to be here 
thank you all for, for having the second minor in house. And thanks to Henry too for, for being gracious and, and not, you know, there's there's gonna be competition wherever we look. And and um, if we can play with, with each other um, as well, I think that just makes us stronger individually. So um, thank you for that. And thanks for you guys letting us, letting us come here. Absolutely. I do have um, two other team members that'll be kind of coming in and out. Caesar, I, I'm sure he was here the first week and met a lot of you. Um, he is bilingual, uh, Spanish speaking, so he's definitely a good piece to have in that. And then um, Ashley will be coming in. She's just got license, so I'll be mentoring her. Um, and she's she's young. She's going to take care of that millennial crowd for us and know how to speak to them and the language they speak. I'm, she's like, like to think I'm young still. I'm not a millennial. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's good to have those coming in, those other you know, strength star team. And, um, and you guys will see, you know, different different people popping in and out and um, I am pretty much getting set up, um, but I'll be here most of the time and then uh, usually out early afternoon. Um, always available though, give me a call. If I don't answer, it's because I'm not available, but I'll certainly get back to you as soon as I can. And um, I know real estate does not have an eight to five, six to eight to five. And uh, I'm okay with that. It does not, trust me, it does not. It does not. not. It's a <laughs> Friday night at 8.30, you're like, ah, I just wanna go to bed. <laughs> and things are flying, so it's all good, it's all good. So come see me, my office is on the other side. Um, eventually I'll have some some signage up and you'll know exactly which office is mine. But um, again, happy to be here and thank you. They're on the south side, so their south side is Henry's on the north side, their north side is on the north side. Though. I don't think yeah, that's right, this, this is nice. <laughs> Well, cool. So you guys uh, talked about wanting to mastermind around. Around um, how to get contracts in. I'll see if I can write so you can read. No promises. So y'all wanted to talk about how to get contracts accepted, how to get buyers into homes, right? So if we let's take a page out of Gary's book and draw a triangle. What goes on that triangle? What goes down here? Order the state leads leverage. <laughs> I don't know what goes where. Listing. And leverage. I write better sideways than you. So it leads listings and leverage. So what you focus on expands. What would happen if we go and we start focusing on listings? Just start shouting it out. You guys online too. What happens when we start to focus on listings? What happens in your business? What happens in the marketplace? What happens? What happens, Shannon? Uh, that's what you, that's what you start seeing, what you start experiencing. We, we're hearing a lot about buyers at the moment, right? So if you, if that's what you're focusing on is buyers, what are you going to find? More buyers. Are they easier or harder to work with right now? Oh, challenge. <laughs> Right, challenge, and, challenge. And you get plenty of buyers from reading listings. So. Oh, would you say that again? You get plenty of buyers from focusing on listings. So if you only focus on listings, you're not giving up buyers. Absolutely, you are not giving up buyers. What also comes when you have a listing in and assigned in somebody's yard and you market it really, really well? Other listings. Oh, Other well. listings start to happen. So. If we're looking at leads, listings, and leverage, what can we do every day in our business okay. to create the leads that lead to listings and give us greater leverage? Because we have greater leverage, well, we've got listings coming on. Do y'all have a whole bunch of buyers written down? I know Special Forces does. There's a whole list of them in there. If we were, went around talking about buyer needs at the moment, we'd be here for probably two or three hours. I'm not doing this. <laughs> so let's talk about it. Everybody up online too, what, what are some of the things that you can do to focus on leads?
leaves, what are some things that you can start doing when you leave this room today? Let's get some actionable items up here. Door knock. Door knock. If you want low hanging fruit, call your past client. Oh. Call your spirit. Yeah. They're never past. True. Oh, I like this. This here is the spear. Oh, my. Nope, that's it. E-R-E, -E, spear, for your S-O-I, right? Spear of influence. You should always go out for dollars. Talk, you know, talk to everybody everywhere you go. Like the gas station, everywhere. the grocery store, or the, just somehow get into a conversation. Everyone. Wear your name tag. I've got three... Fire leaves, so the fire is it. So just wear my name tag. You know what else works? You get a realtor pen when you, yeah. from the South Notre Dame Realtor Association as well, right? So if you don't like the big tag, you can put your realtor pen on. I got a $938,000 listing. Wearing that in the grocery store one day, in line. Nice. And a double in for the summer. That was a nice commission. <laughs> it's a nice commission. What else? Just because you're new doesn't mean you can't jump in. <laughs> what else? Do a giveaway. A giveaway. What else? Somebody up online, Madison. Referrals. Referrals from whom? Other agents in your network. Awesome, Marcia, who else? Jessica, Morgan, William, Scott. What else guys, Bud, Ginny. Open houses. What kind? Hey, it's Marcia. You could call your past clients that closed five, six, seven years ago and see if they're in the right house. Oh, are you in your dream home? Right. I'm sorry, I'm in the middle of my PPP loan documentation. <laughs> I know, but I'm going to keep fighting through. And William, I might need tech help. <laughs> <laughs> Running ads in demand. Ads in demand. Calling old leads from ads. Expires. Expires. If you can find them, yeah. For sale by owners. I was just waiting for you yeah. to say that. <laughs> they may be mentally ill this week, but <laughs> I'll talk to you. <laughs> so, for sale by owner, this bows running out of ink. What else? What's your lender? Lenders. <laughs> I know we, we, we actively market for referrals too. Yeah. Your vendor partners too. Yeah. Which is, These are yeah, kind of few and far between, but we're starting to have them again. I have one every weekend. Uh, networking events. Networking where events. Where you normally hang out and just tell everybody your engagement. John, what do you do? I was thinking vendors. Vendors. And church. Church is a great networking event. <laughs> Everywhere you go, right? You know what's amazing is when people are in school getting their license, they tell everybody. Everybody. The minute they pass the test, they get the super glue out and glue their lips shut. Yeah. You know, like, what the heck? Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> what else? For your kids and parents and their friends. Kids. Their friends. Kids activities, right? Oh, 
These are the easy ones. Now start to dig deep because this is where you'll find the gold. What else? Do you set up your DTD2 so you don't skip people in your box? Talk about DTD2. What is that? Because we have people in the room who don't know what that is. Um, it stands for do your database twice. So everybody in your database. Um, so there's like you break them down. We can post something that you can see what it is. So it's like A's and W's get a phone call and a text this week, um, whoever, the, whatever it is the next week. So you go into your database and you make tags for each letters and then you pop people in there based off their last name. So then when that week comes up, you're like, okay, I'm calling these people, I'm texting these people. Because if we're like, okay, we need to make certain amount of phone calls, we'll keep scrolling and scrolling to be like, who's going to be fun to talk to? But if you do the DTE two, you're not going to skip people. And then it's amazing the deal that you get with somebody who was like, I didn't even know you did that. Or, oh, I was just getting ready to do this. I, you know, I didn't even think about calling you. But it sets up a reminder so you're doing that in your phone and you don't get to scroll past people. Or, I didn't even know how'd you get my too. phone, right? Like, I don't even know who you could like. At some point in time, we had to have talked about real yeah. estate or one of my kids. Who are you? Yeah. Did you know who I was when I called? Because I don't remember how you got my phone, but it must know you somehow. You can have fun with it, right? Yeah. Yeah, DTB2. So the last time I taught that class, it's called Never Ending Referrals. Um, one of the agents on the first day, the first call week, you're calling everybody whose last name ends with A and W. And so she called through and got to the W's and was talking to the a mom that she knew from somewhere and she goes you know we love the street we live on if you ever knew of a home coming on the market on your cold sack we would love to live there and she goes you're not going to believe this but tomorrow we're putting a house on the market at the end of our cold sack this is what it is this is the price so she went over and looked at it put an offer on it full price offer on it and then they had to go and list the property that they had. She did just over $2 million worth of business off of that one phone call. And she said, this went out nationally because I had to interview her and then it went out nationally, which is crazy. Um, but it had my hair done so I didn't know that was happening. Um, um, she said, I would never have called her, but I just trusted the system and I did it. Because I never would have called her, I would have missed two million, oh, two million dollars worth of sales. You can figure out the commission. What else? Let's get into the goal. I would even add in when you're going through and making your calls, you know, being newer, um, especially in the beginning, calling people that are like, dude, I'm not even done unpacking when you're selling me this house. And like just kind of laughing about it and be like, okay, well, if I had upcoming classes, what would you? added to your schedule that I provided. Now, oh, well, I was always thinking about what it would be like to be an investor. Sweet. So asking them those additional questions, not just like the home you're going to live in, like asking them, what else is it that you're wanting that you're interested in doing? And seeing what they say, because then it's just like, oh yeah, I was totally had that in my plans to do that. And now I'm like, I don't even find somebody to teach that. Right? But the problem they have. What else can you do? I do uh, birthday pop buys. Birthday pop buys. Pop buys season. Pop buys season. Birthday. Any holiday. Any darn excuse. And if you if you tag it into the DTV two, you're not. What else? What is the home snap? Home snap. Uh, for their heat maps. The what? They have a heat map that uh, shows who will try to remove. Oh, okay. And I just snap. missed a, a salad by a few days. Uh, and it's out of house. Wow. Uh, Sunday, prospect of the marriage. It was uh, just time to spend a few days here. Wow. So I'm looking for a buyer. That's what I'm using. Yeah. All kinds of tools out there, right? All kinds of tools. You gotta know what they each do. What else? 
handwritten notes. Uh, you yeah. kind of get a personal touch in there and they're more likely to open it instead of just a postcard. Excuse me. It's your past clients. So with everything going on right now, being like, guess what cost is worth right now? Even if you only sold a year ago or you bought it a year ago. And not even past clients, but your neighbors. I had a neighbor yesterday say, can you believe how much the house around the corner sold for? And I said, I was surprised you wouldn't even need it. You want to see me on yours? Yes, please. Yeah, do you want to so, see what yours yeah. were? Um, hey, you guys online, you're being lazy and letting the room do all the heavy lifting. <laughs> so <laughs> shut him in. Don't make me come find you. I have all your address. Scott, what else? Well, I guess a um, couple of things I don't think I've heard. Uh, one would be social media ads through command, like a Facebook yep. ad that targets sellers. Post videos, take videos and post them on your social media. And then also, I also, oh. Oh, go ahead, Jenny. Oh, <laughs> um, probably here in the next couple of months, people are going to be itching to get out. So you could do some sort of an event, a gathering. An event for your sphere or just about anybody, right? Past clients. Yep. Awesome. Somebody else is going to talk. Who's that? You, bud? I, I was going to mention something along those lines of events, maybe doing if you need to do something online, you could do like a seller seminar or something like that. Anybody ever been to a seller seminar? How many people heard of buyer seminars? Yeah. Anybody ever heard of a seller seminar? Right? It's like, whoa, how do I get my home ready? What do I do? I mean, there are people that think, oh my gosh, I have to redo literally everything. Or I don't have to redo anything. You have both sides of the spectrum, right? What else? Now you guys are finding the gold. What else? Brooksy, what else? Just circle dialing around um, neighborhoods that your buyers are potentially interested in as a in with them. Yeah. What else? Hey, bud, are you on? Watch when he pops back and ask a question. In the past, one of my big successes was door knocking the fifth doors around an open house that I'm getting ready with an invitation. Yep, I've been able to sell my own open house to someone that wasn't my listing off of that or get other listings in the neighborhood based on other people. Who knows what the, the, the fifth to seventh level open house is? Get the shift book out. Shift. Also in the MREA book, Millionaire Real Estate. The open house with door knock around the open house that only had doors around it. Um, then so we find all the neighbors. So the neighbors comes in first for the main public. And so you do it to where in the past you made it to where. Your house went on the market. Let's say you put it in the MLS on Wednesday, and showings didn't start until your open house. And then you, your invitation to the neighborhood was, let's say your open house was at noon. The invitation for the neighborhood was to come in early at eleven thirty, because then the public is come, the rest of the public is coming in with their agents at noon. But you've already got looking new neighbors coming in, making it look busy. We don't need that as much now, but that was our situation before and that's how we did that. I think you need it as much now as you ever did before. You have to take control of the marketing because they go off the market that quick. Right? If it's well priced, well put together, it goes off the market. 
like that. And then you lose your marketing ability. And you still need to do open houses. I mean, right now, before when you're doing open houses, it's just like you might get some quality leads coming through depending on how well you do your stuff. But right now you're going in and you have no issue of anybody filling anything out because it's COVID. Yep. They will fill out absolutely everything. So as long as you're on top of it and you have you have to have a second person. Because someone's got to be outside helping with people in line, taking their temperatures and filling everything out and doing all that. Well, it's one person filling in the house at a time. Yep. But if you do things right and you take your time, you're going to get more stuff out of it. Yep. So there's no reason to not do an open house right now. Yep. Take control of your marketing. And in Shift, it gives you, and it's in Ignite as well. If you go back to Ignite to sell your, sell your listing, there's a list of things to do in the open house section that starts on Monday for the open house that you're going to do on the weekend. So it's not, oh, wake up on Saturday morning, it's nine o'clock, eh, I don't have anything to do. I guess I'll go to a sign up in the listing and sit here and eat my own cookie. We even made signs that, like little stick in the ground ones, um, after our listing is under contract in line, we got multiple offers. Our, our seller can only accept one. If you've been thinking about selling, call this number. And just doing those additional things and making sure that you're not just door knocking like at one time in a neighborhood for your open house invitation. It's like nobody's going to remember if you do something one time. You also, you have to make an entire plan around it of like, okay, do we send something out beforehand and then we do the open house invitation and then the under contract. And then what is your plan for the rest of the time? Because nobody's going to remember that one thing. Even if they're looking at doing something. Who else comes through an open house besides buyers? We always think it's buyers. Well, we well, certainly have to go through it. Oh, the neighbors. Sellers. Sellers. Yeah. And they come through talking like they're a buyer because they're sneaking in the door, right? Sneaking in the door and they're watching what you're doing. And if you've done that open house between that fifth and seventh level and you've been out in the neighborhood, Maybe in the move up neighborhood, it's our move down neighborhood, and then work the neighborhood that folks sit in. And you've invited these people to come in, and you've even narrowed it down to these are the people most likely to move. You're inviting potential sellers in, and they're interviewing you without maybe realizing it and watching how you take care of this person's property to get it sold off the market. What did it go for? Now it's how much, you know, how many thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars over did it go, right? Yeah. But there's so many, so many different times. It's about, I don't know, seven to ten different times you can touch one person when you do the open house the right way. So never waste an open house. And look up the expires in the area too. And send yep. them all the info, all the invitations and do all that too. Open or for sale signs in yards are like it's it's like a little disease, right? It's like then the neighbor catches it, then the one across the street catches it. They start popping up. Why not your sign? Right? Why not your sign? What else? But um, sorry about that. I I had to step away for a quick second, but uh. I think one thing too in this market is it, it feels like every conversation I have is about, you know, do you know anybody thinking of selling? Um, you know, just I'm, I'm completely focused on trying to get listings or so. And obviously they're kind of like a needle in a haystack, to be honest, but it's just that that's where my focus is. And, and um, you know, every conversation I have, hey, market's great, you know, great time to sell. Do you know anybody thinking of selling? And just those words kind of, whether it's through an email or, or Facebook ad or, or whatever, just that's, that's what I'm sort of searching for. Um, because I'm, you know, even if you get a buyer at, you know, 450 grand, it's a tough road. Yep. You know, that, that a lot of times those houses are closing five to 530. And, and if people can't go that high, um, it can be a, a, a frustrating experience, I think, for everybody. I mean, it's almost like if you have a four hundred seventy-five thousand dollar buyer, you probably should be looking and have the conversation with them that they're going to be looking at four hundred thousand dollar houses um, that are going to land 
450 to 475. And that, that's just the, the reality of what, what we're in. Yeah, we're not up buying the dream home today, more than likely, right? You could buy, buy something that you could get into. It's amazing to me how much cash is out there. I know. Yeah. Wow. Wowzer. It's like, whoo, craziness. Um, here's the other thing, too. Do you guys know all of the different clauses in our clause manual that Damien, our um, office attorney, has written for you? Go If you don't know them, uh, there's a clause manual printed back there. If you want a, another copy, if you can print it off, um, we can add it in Friday's email. Uh, 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 so you've got that handy. It lives in CTMB. Um, is it in DocuSign as well? You don't use it or teach out of it. We'll find out. The clause manual is in there. Um, Damien also just updated because of this crazy market and the things that buyers are, are doing to win properties, he's rewritten the seller advisory and the buyer advisory. And those are also brand new and uploaded in CTME and in DocuSign as of yesterday. So those are all brand new in there. So I would go back and reread those so you are familiar with them and what he's you know, cautioning people against. Uh, before they make decisions. Not telling them don't do it, it's just you need to know if you proceed in this fashion, right? And he's protecting you guys. So anything else that you guys can think of? What are you gonna put to work? Any, anybody see something brand new up here? Seller seminar is new. I had to talk about that concept. So seller seminar is new, okay. What else? What would you clear your schedule to come and learn? Yeah, Mr. Education Space is right here. <laughs> We're doing something a little different that you can maybe out of there. Like my dad's side of the family has a family directory. And when the person I was taking care of that passed away, that stopped being taken care of. So I'm reaching out to people to put a family directory together, which means now I'm emailing everybody from my work account. And getting all their info, making sure everything's updated and, and all that. And then I'm also going to do it on my mom's side of the family. And so now it gives an excuse to get everybody's information and get in front of actually everybody. And then while you're on the phone with them, making sure you have all their, you know, their correct stuff. You're like, how's work going? And have that board conversation with people. Yeah. Yeah. Family, occupation, recreation, drinks. Beyond just family, church, your neighborhood, our cul de sac has one. Sit on your HOA board. And HOA board. I'm the vice president. And so I have everybody's name, address, phone number, email. <laughs> Are you They're allowed all to use it even though? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I actually, um, I form my neighborhood people. But I have actually received a thank you note in the mail from one of my neighbors for one of my door knocking things. I should see it. So that's awesome. Don't be afraid of your, your HOA. No. School boards, too. Yeah, yeah school yeah. boards, CTA, all of that. Yeah. I mean, how many other places can you think of? I think as chair of the education committee, one of the first classes we should have is Keller William E's. Like, what are all these different acronyms? What do they stand for? What are they? <laughs> right? I know. They're every sign. Yeah. They pull in a new one on me once and I'm like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we should put it up around here and there and everywhere. So what else? What else would you clear your schedule for to make sure you attend it? I would love to have some land stuff. Ooh, land. Yeah. I haven't done any land here. What else? New construction. New yeah. construction. Huge. And just thinking ahead a little bit, REOs. REOs, home properties. Yep. Because it's coming down the pipe. Yep. As Absolutely. soon as people are allowed to take their kids up here. Yeah. 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 And that's big business. I did primarily that in New Mexico. It's huge. Or even as uh, tenants are evicted eventually, then those owners might. Yep. 
be like, hey, I'm out of this game because they took a bath for so long. Right. COVID, so they need them. So it's everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. What else? Shannon. As far as class, diving a little, I think, uh, diving a little bit deeper on how to run it, uh, or about the return on investment on the property. That's how to run a Yeah, how to, uh, how to run my cap rates and um, really dive a little bit deeper into that. I will second whoever just said that about the cap rate because I would love to learn about that as well. Yeah. Awesome. Good one. So, I mean, it's good. I mean, you'll have people calling that for me. Is this a good investment? You need to know how to have those conversations, right? I have sold lots of houses to people with small children. And it's like, it's a college fund. It's a buy my first home fund. They probably need it more now than ever. It's a I'm getting married fun, or maybe all of those things wrapped in together. How to get out of debt. Do you ever go and teach your clients how to get out of debt? So the lender that I used all the time, we would make an appointment about 30 days after they closed and got packed and go and set up uh, or help them uh, learn how to pay their house off in whatever time they determine. And now we can take that cash, put it into a savings account, and now go buy a house for little Johnny and Susie and right. That would be a niche seller seminar topic. Mm -hmm. College homes for kids rather than paying to rent. Yeah. It's cheaper to buy a house, have it in like three rooms out of it, sell it for this. Yep. And probably pay for everything. Exactly. Right? Um, yeah. So um credit return. How to protect your credit. That's I think it's hard that. to repair, right? But it's how do you protect it and what do you not way. do to harm it? Yeah. Because it doesn't, it's not logical. So there's a lot of people that would love to buy and they just can't because of their credit. Yep. So credit class, how do we, we used to teach this over at the high schools. Um, and I don't know if the Colorado Association of Realtors still does this or not. But we used to go into Littleton, Heritage, Arapahoe, um, there's some other high schools that we would go to and go teach the seniors a class because they have no idea what credit is and they're getting ready to go off to college. And one of the first things that I was never knew they did until my daughter went to college was they start, here's a whole bunch of things that you did for you. Yeah. And all of it, and thank God she's responsible because a bunch of them aren't, right? Um, how do I read a lease? How do I lease my first property? What does that take? How do I totally screw my credit up? Mm -hmm. Budgeting everything. I'm going through that with him right now. I'm budgeting up because they're like, I don't totally move out. Like, that's cute. How much do you think that's going to cost? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's even, what is the class that Gary does with the kids? Um, quantum leap. Quantum leap. Like having something like quantum leap coming in, but piggybacking off of that on like a credit and budget management and and things like that. We have some uh, qualified quantum leap instructors here. I would get qualified for that. Yeah. That's an awesome. If you have kids that are in the age range to go to that, go. 18 to 23. It's it's amazing. My son went to that and he actually went to Austin with Debbie and um, got to do it with Gary. And um, oh, that's my graduation present to them. So we go to Austin and they get to go sit in front of Gary for um, it's supposed to be eight hours. They were there about 10. Yeah. Jake said was in there at the same time. We're sitting out he, in June, the end of June, waiting for him to come out. It's like, dang, it's hot out here. <laughs> <laughs> and he came home and created a vision board. Awesome. Like most adults don't create vision boards, or if they do, they're not very purposeful. And he came home and he does his vision board every single year. Yep. And so it, there's certain things like, that we do that we can absolutely push down for our kids. Yeah, these kids leave with um, a mission statement. They leave with goals. They, I mean, Gary tells them his story up there. My son, I know um, Dylan kind of, I'm like, okay, grandma's taking me and I get to travel. So, okay, all good. 
And I'm like, are you excited? And the first little text message was, yeah, this is great. Lunchtime, I sent a text message. I said, how's it going so far? That text message went on and on <laughs> and on. It's pretty cool. Oh. And now he has bragging rights of the closer period. Until <laughs> last <laughs> So last Until the week, last time, yeah, then we, we got we to sit up front for a thing at family reunion once. It wasn't the concert, but before that, I just sent a picture. I'm like, eh, for real. And he's like, I was so close to my cousin Alice Cologne. I'm like, that's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It was true, but that's a creepy way to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, did you guys get some ideas? Have you written something down? If you leave here and you don't go put something into play, Right. If you go, don't go use something today, then this was an hour's worth of maybe not so great entertainment. <laughs> and maybe if you need just to like call out or mastermind around one of the ideas, come sit down with any of anybody. Because sometimes you need to sit down and chat with somebody and be like, okay, how am I going to put this together? Yeah. And you need to go back and forth. So just anybody will do that. So just go grab some. Yeah. I've got a suggestion. Mm -hmm. um, just a little plug. When does our new special forces start? So uh, the training for that starts next Monday for two weeks. And then there's the week break in between graduation for the current group is the 26th of March. The next group starts April 5th. And so um, that will be going out in emails as well. So you guys, a lot of what we're discussing today we've been doing in special forces. So if you're interested in learning or, or pinpointing something, bring it to special forces and Get focused. They took 11 listings in the first, I want to say, eight weeks. I think that's right. 11 listings. And if you haven't gone back there and checked out the board, you should. If you haven't come back there and checked out the energy at 8.35 in the morning, you should. So it's a great way out of here if you're newer or if you've been doing this for 30 years like me um, you will learn uh, the the camaraderie and um carol how easy it is that you went out on some when you run into another Kristen, tim who else is back there richard yeah. they're like you aren't failing well, and it's gotten me to get my database up to stuff. I've gone for 15 years with my database barely there. And now it's yeah. it's getting there. Getting it together is not an option. Right. Like, you yeah. have to. And for the people that are brand new and you're like, that might be too much. Like, our brand new people are smoking their season agents in our yeah. office. Because they're learning the right way to do business right up front. Instead of learning bad habits that now you've got to break. If you're so, a whim, don't come. Seriously, I say that all the time. Is it easy, Tim? No. <laughs> no. You're killing me. Oh, no, there, easy, there are weeks I cried, yeah. guys. I'm not joking. I yeah. cried. <laughs> if you want to, like she said, succeed in your business and you are willing to do whatever it takes. Like, I left 12 years in law enforcement with, you know, 30 vacation days a year to do this. And this was like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to go all the way. And I wouldn't have to have it. And you, okay. and you left that behind two months early. Yeah. Keyword habits. Yes. Habits. Yeah. Come form good habits. Really good habits. And you've already closed the business. Yes. And his first <laughs> closing and his first listing all in the same week. All in the same week. So I don't think I would have gotten it without the help, the accountability, and the focus. And, you know, we all lift each other up. So don't feel like, oh, I'm going to get this. I'm all alone. No, we're like, all there to pick each other up. Because you get beat up by fires, dispose, you have down days, but we're all here to, to, to win together. Yeah, there are Monday mornings when they all come crawling in, right? You all come crawling in, and you can tell everybody needs just you to see breathe. My dad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the commitment is there, and now the results are happening, and they're going to continue. And they're all signing up for the next 12 weeks. So it's not going to be a brand new group. It's going to, you've got some seasoned people in there as well. So all you have to do is come and see me. It, it's 150 bucks on the line. If you if you wash out, if you foul out, you get three fouls. We're not like bold. We're not wimpy. If you get three fouls, you've washed out. And it's okay. 
you can still continue to work and you can come back for the next 12 weeks. But I'm telling you, there's, I'm looking at faces here, they will not let you wash out. It ain't easy to wash out. And it isn't easy always to succeed. But I tell you what, they lock arms and off they go. And I can poke, I poke my head out the door this morning and it said, Tim, can you take the seeds up? Yep. He said, we ran the whole thing. Ran the whole thing. And tomorrow morning, somebody will run the whole thing because I'm on a coaching call. So um, talk to the other people in special forces and find out um, who they've become. Not just what's except for their business, but who they've become because they have the guts to jump. And it makes bold super easy. <laughs> and Richard here, said it was a vacation. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't even have to worry about bold because if I hit my numbers in special forces, I was gold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. And we're going to go play at main event on, for graduation on the 25th. So we're going to go have fun. Mm -hmm. All right. Any last bit? We're like six minutes over. Are we good? All right. We're going to start working on getting lunch back brought into uh, on Wednesdays as well. And we've got a fun event coming up um, in place of, um, we didn't get have our gala this year, right? So we're going to do something really cool here in the office that we'll talk to you about probably next week. Cool. Don't forget Flapjack Friday. We'll be here flapping the jacks. Do we have an ALC today? I think we were supposed to. Yeah. Um, I, yes. Uh, hey, I brought something really cool. I do. Please don't take them, but I thought you might get a kick out of looking at these are the old soul books. This is from uh, 1976, October. And this is from okay. April 1982. Um, so this is what we used to get. Yes. Yeah. And the, the available book was like a full book. But you might like to take a look at them. I'll put them in the back. Just don't take them. Yeah. I was cracking up at our conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I got lost in our city here. Yeah, it's good.